Yo, welcome, welcome everyone. I'm the good Dr. He here at Generation X Fertility. So let's get right into it. So what are the most common reasons why someone would fail an IVF cycle? That is a great question. So the most common reason why people will fail is usually because of age and abnormal embryos. Embryo quality and the likelihood of an embryo implanting is intimately tied to the age of the woman at the time of the creation of an ovulation of the egg. And so as a woman ages, the embryos that are created are more likely to be chromosomally abnormal, that we call that in the medical field, aneuploid embryos. So 95% of all errors will have occurred before the embryo is even created. So that's the most common, but there's a host of other reasons why IVF cycles can fail. Uterine lining thickness um, or history of fibroids, adenomyosis, there's uterine issues, issues with sperm, core embryo development. Um, there's a whole litany of different reasons why IVF won't work, but age is the most common. Why, and I don't think it's why is IVF failing. I think it's more of why would someone have failed implantation of an embryo if you've gone through the IVF process, you tested the embryo and the test and the embryo is considered chromosomally normal or euploid, why would that fail? Why would that fail to implant? So there are reasons why some people will fail. So if you had a chromosomally normal embryo, in reality, the chance of it creating a live birth is somewhere between 50 and 60% chance of implanting and going to live birth. Even with chromosomally normal embryos, there could be miscarriages. If someone's failing to implant, you have to start thinking, could they have some type of issues with the uterus or in the environment of the uterus? such as endometriosis, adenomyosis, fibroids, uh, dilated or infected fallopian tubes called hydrosalpings, some type of uterine infection that could be lowering the implantation of an embryo. Those are the more common reasons why embryos don't implant. But there are obvious reasons that we don't know. It could be genetic issues that we can't test for in an embryo that's preventing and reducing the ability of the embryo to implant. There could be immune factors in, in the patient who when you transfer the embryo, they're mounting an immune response and reducing the ability of, it, of the embryo to implant. So that's a great question. No direct answer, but each individual person has to have an evaluation to decide what's the likelihood of that happening. So if someone has, for example, three chromosomally normal embryos, the chance of a live birth after three embryo transfers of chromosomally normal embryos is not, as close to 90%. So that means nine out of 10 couples who have chromosomally normal embryos will end up with a pregnancy and a live birth, but still one in 10 couples won't. And that's the challenging part is, what do we do for those couples? Hi, I'm the good Dr. Haid here at Generation X Fertility. If you like this content, please click the link below and subscribe.